Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition's top stories, St. Lucia's emergency response agencies participate in a specially designed RSS training exercise. St. Lucia is among eight regional countries included in a newly instituted CARICOM travel bubble. And St. Joseph's Convent and the National Conservation Authority receive support from the National COVID-19 Telethon Fund. Coordination is the best bet that response agencies have in contending with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and a major weather system. That was one of the takeaways from St. Lucia's round of a tabletop response mechanism exercise organized by the Regional Security Systems Training Institute on Wednesday, 16th September 2020. Details in this report. With forecasters predicting an above normal hurricane season, First responders in the region are being prepared should the COVID-19 pandemic and a catastrophic weather system collide. The Regional Security System Training Institute held a national tabletop exercise with representatives from St. Lucia's Police Force, the Fire Service, the Corrections Department, the Ministry of Health, Customs and Excise Department, and the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, to practice their response for a hurricane hazard and a COVID-19 pandemic scenario. Doreen Gustav is the director of NEMO. We know that we are in the peak of the hurricane season, and so it is important to ensure that our various response mechanisms are working. And so this was a test to ensure that we are able to coordinate and to prepare and to respond in the event of an emergency. Um, it's COVID-19. We had to look at our shelters, how they're going to operate. We had to look at um, how the responding agencies, such as the police and the fire department, um, already they are stretched with COVID-19. And so with a hurricane compounding the situation, we had to ensure that we are able to respond in a manner that will not cause more problems for us. Coming off of the exercise, the Chief Fire Officer, Joseph Joseph, stressed the importance of a coordinated effort in executing a national response mechanism. In this scenario, we have prepared our fire officers um, to be ready for uh, any, any emergency, of course, observing all the COVID-19 protocols and um, of course, there's, there's proper coordination with the other agencies because it's very likely that um, we will be overwhelmed um, in, in, in one situation or the other. And uh, that's where uh, the other agencies come. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glenn Ford Joseph, represents the Department of Health. He assured the continued review of their disaster protocols where the pandemic is concerned. At the Ministry of Health, we are going to revise our protocols, which we have done, but we will continue to strengthen and to ensure that we have the various linkages with the other ministries and departments so that we can respond cohesively to hurricane or any other disaster in the context of COVID-19. St. Lucia's National Tabletop Exercise for Responding to a Potential Hurricane Hazard and a COVID-19 Pandemic Scenario was held online with participants conferencing at the NEMO headquarters. This RSS exercise was held for each of the seven participating member states from Monday 14 September to Thursday 17 September and facilitated with the assistance of three other regional agencies, namely CARICOM Impacts, CARFA and CDEMA. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. St. Lucia is among eight regional countries included in a travel bubble decided upon by the CARICOM heads of government. The travel bubble was agreed upon at the heads' 12th special emergency meeting on the COVID-19 pandemic. 
The bubble comes into effect Friday 18th, September 2020. Chairman of CARICOM and Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, in a statement says the region has been hard hit given its dependence on the travel tourism sector. Honorable Gonzalez revealed that the decision to institute a travel bubble among countries of the Caribbean community was based on the need to resuscitate the travel tourism sector of member states and, by extension, the economy of the region. In agreeing to this, the heads of government were guided by a comprehensive report from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, which provided recommendations on how the bubble would operate and laid out the eligibility criteria for countries to participate. These criteria included that countries would be categorized ranging from those with no cases to those which had low, medium, high, and very high risk with respect to the rate of positive cases over a 14-day period. The level of risk would be determined by the number of positive cases per 100,000 of the population within a 14-day period. Only those countries with no cases and those in the low risk category would be allowed to participate in the bubble. Relevant data will be assessed by CAFA to advise on participation in the bubble. Travelers from countries within the bubble will be allowed entry in CARICOM states without being subjected to PCR testing prior to arrival and will not be quarantined. Travelers may, however, be subjected to screening on arrival. Initially, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines will be included in the bubble as they presently meet the criteria. Other member states and associate members will be allowed to participate when they meet the criteria. The full requirements and protocols would be made available to the public and would be accessed both locally and regionally through the different media platforms. Heads of government look forward to more CARICOM countries joining the travel bubble as the region learns to live with this pandemic safely without destroying lives or livelihoods. That was Chairman of CARICOM and Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Honorable Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. And meanwhile, CARICOM Finance Minister has joined representatives of more than 60 countries and institutions in a virtual meeting on the economic consequences of COVID-19 and response strategies. Michelle Nurse of CARICOM News Time has more. Back in May, the Prime Ministers of Canada and Jamaica and the UN Secretary General launched an initiative titled The Financing for Development in the Era of COVID-19 and Beyond. The virtual meeting of finance ministers was one of a series of discussions being held under that initiative to build a comprehensive and coordinated multilateral response to the challenges developing countries are facing. The overall objective of the meeting of finance ministers is to present a single ambitious menu of policy options to the heads of government and state to recover from the current crisis in the short term and to mobilize the financial resources to achieve the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals. Building resilience and sustainability of countries and the global financial architecture over the medium to long term is also part of the objective. The menu of options will be presented for a decision at a special meeting of heads of state and government on the margins of the 75th United Nations General Assembly on the 29th of September 2020. Minister of Finance of Jamaica, Dr. Nigel Clark, told the session that COVID-19 summons all of us to act with dispatch. It is incumbent upon us to clearly identify credible policy measures that we can propose to our heads of state and governments in order to ensure swift action and implementation, he said. 
The St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School and the National Conservation Authority have received funding for the purchase of PPEs from the National COVID-19 Telethon Fund. The National Conservation Authority and the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School are the latest beneficiaries of the COVID-19 Response Telethon Fund. On Thursday, September 17th, a check was presented to each institution for the purchasing of personal protective equipment. Um, I am going to do the first one to the um, National Conservation Authority, which is going to be receiving some $13,169.33. Have to count every bit, um, and we will be presenting this to the CEO of the National Conservation Authority. They are the organization responsible for um, our many vendors who would, from time to time, come into contact with tourists from um, all over the world that are coming to St. Lucia at present, and our vendors, our staff at NCA, as they execute their duties, they need to have. Um, appropriate and adequate protection uh, equipment and so we are pleased to present this check to you. On behalf of the board and the management and staff and vendors of the NC, I want to thank you. Right now, when you look at the United States. Also in need of personal protective equipment is the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School which made an application to the government for assistance to procure items including plexiglass and face shields. A check for $7,981.88 was handed over to a member of the school's faculty. I would like to thank the Ministry of Tourism for this immense donation and I can assure you that it has gone a long way and it will go a long way to make our environment safer for the students and staff, and not just the teaching staff, the support staff who work at the school. Thank you very much. The check presentations were held at the GIS studios. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leonce reporting. Students from schools island-wide will get an opportunity to learn about the life of St. Lucian Botham Jean. The Botham Jean Foundation is screening a two-hour documentary by Discovery Channel entitled The Ballad of Botham. The film provides a chronology of the life and death of Botham Jean, as well as the trial of a former police officer, Amber Geiger, who was convicted of his killing. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer says a corporate citizen who believes that the film should be viewed by students in St. Lucia has made the provisions. We are honored that the foundation and the director of the foundation, that being Mrs. Alison Jean, has invited our students, and more so a corporate citizen has found it necessary to speak to the importance of ensuring that his legacy remains significant in the minds and hearts of our children. And so this Friday, our Form 5s and Form Fours are invited alongside their teachers, and we've targeted every single secondary school, including our private ones, so that the students get an opportunity to view that documentary, free of cost, a slight snack will be provided for them, and in addition to that, the corporate citizen has agreed to pay transportation for every single school on island. And so, as a Department of Education, we are very, very pleased to support this program and to ensure that our students do not forget who Botham Jean was, the impact that his life has had, and as the international community celebrates him, so much that the U.S. has named an avenue after him, that we as St. Lucians recognize his legacy, in St. Lucia as a whole, but more so we give honor to him as an individual and we support his family likewise. Dr. Meyer, who has watched the Ballad of Botham, says the documentary film is impactful. It is really about the pain and suffering that was caused, but more so the resilience of the family and the overwhelming love that we saw of Mr. Jean for his family, for his nation, St. Lucia. And so it is for us to rally round our own. 
You know, very often we look at it from a distance, but it is to say, how best can we as St. Lucians appreciate that something has happened, which we would pray never happens to any other family. But out of this, what can we gain from it? What lessons are to be learned? What knowledge? And what kind of attitude do we want our young people to have in terms of being resilient, even in the face of such, uh, you know, a horrendous act and tragedy? but coming out of it and saying, how can we be better individuals, better humans? The viewing takes place at Caribbean Cinemas on Friday 18th September from 10.30 a.m. COVID-19 protocols will be in full effect. The Department of Sustainable Development, in collaboration with the St. Lucia Dive Association, several hotel establishments, and certified divers will be hosting an underwater cleanup on Friday 18th September 2020 from 9 a.m. Sites in both the north and south of St. Lucia have been selected, with cleanups scheduled for both the dive sites and the adjacent land spaces from which single-use plastics and other materials are introduced into the marine environment. Cleanups will be hosted at Barron's Drive, Magritut, and Hummingbird Beach Resort in Soufrere, at the front of the Sandals La Toc Resort, and at the Bay Gardens Reef located close to the VG Beach area in the vicinity of a gully from La Clary. The activity will result in the collection and proper disposal of debris that has made its way into the marine environment to the detriment of marine ecosystems and wildlife. It aims to promote environmental stewardship and good practices through widespread sensitization, education and on-the-ground actions, raising awareness of the negative effects of marine litter, especially single-use plastics, on the marine and coastal environment. Video footage and photos of the event will be captured, from which a short documentary will be de developed. The initiative is funded by the Massey Stores SLU Environmental Fund through the services of the St. Lucia National Conservation Fund, Inc. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Equoyale. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiole. Merci autant, Jesse. Merci, Madame Departement, qui est responsable pour la formation en gouvernement cette ci GIS, et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a une nouvelle à Créole. Pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Le Mecca Street, Peter St. Francis, Taiwan, ambassadeur nouveau Taiwan, pour cette ci Peter Shin, il une visitation officielle récemment. Ça, c'était le premier à compte à l'ambassade de Taiwan. Et puis, le maire Castri. Monsieur le maire dit qu'il apprécie autant de assistants qui assistance que l'ambassade de la République Chine, Taïwan, Tchabaï, Biroy, et le conseil de ville et aussi le gouvernement de cette ci En parmi ces divers sujets qui ont été officiels à discuter, c'était l'affaire qui concernait l'opération Biroy, le maire, l'affaire de l'échange de culture et de gouvernance. Monsieur le maire aussi parlé de la continuation du gymnase là qui a existé à cette ci et puis Taïwan. Mais le maire Francis déclare qu'il est très critique pour cette ci continuer la coopération et puis Taïwan pour aider divers développements en relation des pays, des pays là. Il a ajouté que plus que ça, c'est pour des pays à continuer pour bâtir et renforcer la relation qui a existé à Tudia. Après une grande discussion, la tenue échange de cadeaux et que parmi les officiers qui étaient présents, c'était géré des communications concept là, ça c'est Jason Hollingsud, directeur pour des affaires opérations et initiatives spéciales. Madame Mavista Rosemond, deuxième secrétaire Jonathan Yang, conciliateur Bill Young et assistant Cheng Kwan. Bill Castri, excité de Taipei, 
si agreement de gymnase li 22 août 2018. La ni arrangement en place pour établir une opération nouveau pour développement marketing board cette ci chez général Nathaniel Reynolds fait déclaration cela après une deuxième session étonnement pour placer ses travailleurs à dans une meilleure position pour préparer et assembler produits agricoles et d'ailleurs. Selon M. Reynolds, plan c'est pour établir un mode d'opération côté la caïne trop, la pagaille trop produit à sous la place là, en seul coup, avec les cultivateurs. Quand ça, ça c'est les pharma, quand ça produit en façon côté au capotuis, ça m'a qu'à tenir là, ni brisé, ni avec ni la dégouille, avec à lait, ou ces produits là, avec ces derniers là, venez avec là. Ça c'est cette bagaille, nous avons fait qui neuf pour marketing mode là ça vend produit yo pas juste local mais regional et international nous a ka nous a ka vend international parce que nous vend by hotel là c'est moun ki ka rester en hotel là sorti l'autre pays so already nous ka vend international en ce question concerné paiement pour les femmes à l'air c'est une ordre de qui en trois mois qui passé il était ka point de les deux semaines avant, il y a eu des paiement pour produire. Mais à présent, ça a fait plus souvent. Il y a aussi des gens qui sont étonnés, qui sont travaillés, qui sont suivis, qui ont aidé autant. Actuellement, les femmes qui viennent de nous, nous avons payé seulement, right away, et Adam nous avons payé en semaine et en deux semaines. Actuellement, il y a eu des gens qui ont été payés, qui ont été payés à ce à ce travail là, il y a fait actuellement et qui a fait très bon et moi ça dit cette ici, dans le lieu où il gagne manger à ce en retail nous et ben si il gagne wholesale, il a fait trois pieds manger qui bon. Gouverneur général cette ici, c'est Emmanuel Neville Snack, complimenté Club Rotary pour des gros travaux qui ont déjà et qui continuent faire pour développement commun à cette ici et qui joue en jeu à Caribla. Gouverneur général là aussi promet pour supporter le programme Club là, qui a conduit Lyle Chess, qui a trouvé une position comme gouverneur pour ce paroisse là qui a rejoint. M. Chess promet pour, bay, pour essayer d'établir la paix et encourager pour le monde développer plus l'intérêt pour lui avec lui. C'est la première fois que cette ici, j'ai trouvé une position comme ça en Club Rotary. Paroisse là qui 72, la paroisse là qui est 72 clubs. Et le mot, c'est en hauteur de 2017 par S. Commencé et puis 5 kits avec Nevis, Cayenne, Suriname, Aruba, Bonnet et Curaçao. Gouverneur Nef Club Rotary a dit que l'attention est pour essayer pour établir une façon qui est sustainable et pour raison de cela, il a commencé pour établir un club de jeunesse en façade sur cette ci Bon, Club Rotary a déjà trouvé un bon succès pour effacer la maladie polio. Uh, presque tout pays en la terre en dit deux seulement. Chef là, en cette ici, ça c'est la LHS qui a gardé pour trouver même succès en juin et que uh, la première place, le place en attention à ce premier, c'est pour réduire à sous enfants qui a poussé trop grosse. Et c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé nouvelle là, moi je suis au top pour garder, car il y a une invitation, je ne peux pas encore. Si tu es conservé la vie, les mots qui posent dans l'autre nouvelle à quoi à la présent. Merci à Pio Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leos signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.